Okay, so today we are replacing a parking brake valve on a Wabash trailer. This applies to quite a few trailers of different manufacturers. They're all very similar. Uh, but what this one's doing is when you apply through the emergency, there is no release. You get no release. So it's very straightforward. Uh, we just need to take off our lines, our four lines, and our supplies, and these lines, and I mean, it, it comes right off, and then it threads in. So, let's get this thing apart here, and get it going. And like I said, it's a very straightforward, quick, easy. These already have swivel kits on them, so they'll be quite simple to take apart. I may need to go grab another 1116 since this one's fitting a little too tight with the corrosion on this. Well. I usually work through and start to get some of them broke loose. Especially these these northern trailers, which I'm, I'm here in the south, but these trailers that come pass up through north and stuff, the, but you can kind of see some of the rust and corrosion here. It's uh, it's pretty nasty. <clears throat> Luckily, this one's not not too bad, but the tank is quite rusty. The springs are rusty. It looks like it's actually had uh, brake work done on about every axle. It's like fairly new shoes on all but one one hub, which is strange. I don't know why you wouldn't just put all new, but well, sometimes some companies do weird stuff. line off. Sometimes they're just sticky enough, these swivel ends. They're just sticky enough to where you just cannot get them with your fingers. Which is a pain. I hate sitting here swinging the wrench for all eternity. That's what it feels like anyway. off three off I would be willing to bet money I did not bring the right size wrench out here for the smaller lines. They're probably 5 8 These are just 11 16 It's its main supply from the tank here. It passes through your, this is from your actual emergency line coming through the truck comes down comes into here and then this is also tank fill and when you activate this valve to release it will release the emergency side brakes and I bet well, it might actually be a three-quarter wow couldn't do that twice so you just on these push to connect you just push down grab a hold of the collar and pull out 
Same thing over here. And same thing over here for the tank supply line. This one's a little... push the connect fittings off and what I like to do is I like to pre-thread them in the new valve just to avoid um, the accidental confusion of mixing them up so as I pull them out I just kind of start them in my valve just so I don't accidentally mix placement up if you get different sizes it's I mean it happens I've done it more than once and we will have to exchange a quarter inch pipe nipple it looks like for a block off so there's one number three which is an 11 16th another two or three quarters for this plug get the pipe plug out of side here and then all that'll be left is the main fitting on the tank twist her out and then we're good to go let me go grab the proper size wrench here and I'll be right back so we are back and unfortunately it gets to look a little silly I did not bring any wrenches over inch and five sixteenths so we have to take this off the tank using not an inch and five sixteenths wrench, which is unfortunate. But sometimes you just uh, don't have everything you need, which stinks, but I have uh, had this happen and it's just part of doing mobile repair sometimes you just forgot or in my case um, <clears throat> they didn't describe this properly and when I came out uh, I found it was something different so had I known to begin with I would have been able to bring proper supplies unfortunately I was not given the proper information on what was going on with this particular truck, well trailer, okay. So, we will do things the hard way.
baby. That should. I mean, it may just be too rusted in the tank, which would really suck. Typically, you just give them a little bump and they say, okay. There we go. I had to really get behind this. I know I'm completely in the way, so my apologies. Okay. Our valve's loosened up. Spin our valve out. Old valve. Take it for recycling. Take and put a little pipe thread sealer on our new fitting. I always turn pipe thread the incorrect direction the first time, and you can feel it kind of drop down to let you know you're threading. You're actually lined up. I see a lot of cross threaded pipe which is no bueno. It is ironic, you know, we don't carry this valve, but funny enough, we keep a tank. I see more tank failures than I do parking brake valve failures. Again, a little bit of pipe sealer, thread into our hole. Now what this is for, the reason it has two holes, is so you can have a tank supply off either side. So there's some applications where you can't have a tank supply to the driver. You may need one coming to passenger. So they give you, you know, you could put a plug in the side you don't use, or even, you know, if you're running multiple tanks, you can run to more than one tank. That's tight. One more tank is falling off. Pull this one out. In. A little pipe thread sealer. And these two need to face straight up in this application for these lines. And pipe doesn't have to be insanely tight. The biggest thing is you need to be aligned. These are non-swivels, or the swivel part's broken, one of the two. So your biggest thing is alignment and just being snug and the pipe sealer will do the rest for you. I put a bit much on that. have too much then not enough. Okay, these two's in. Put your blue on the left, red on the right. And you can also have the trailer supply come in either direction as well. this fitting for the tank supply in. It was the oddball out of the auxiliary fittings at an 11 16th. Get it up in here. 
your tank line on. And I always like to pull these out to make sure they don't just explode. Now for these, they already have sealer on them that's permanently applied. So I actually don't put sealer back on them. And that may cause controversy to some people. But I have never had them leak with the pre-applied sealer. So that is what I run with. Again, we just gotta get these in here, tighten down. And that's that's one thing I love about these swivel lines. They, you know, you don't gotta worry about them bunching up. Okay, there's one. Now we get number two in here. Comfortable. One thing that stinks about working underneath trailers is getting very uncomfortable very quickly. if it's a bit dark my tower light doesn't really fit under here and it's daylight outside I can see fine I'm not sure how the video quality will turn out it's just a short and simple repair nothing crazy Getting on my nerves. These rusted fittings will break out the dreaded adjust. You know, these things get a lot of hate, but sometimes adjustables and channel locks, especially in roadside repair, oh man, they are the bee's knees. Now let me get the driver to supply this trailer. We'll make sure our brakes unlock. One second. And here we are. We uh, just went and spoke with the driver. Get them to supply air to the trailer. And then we will verify our work.
Apparently he didn't. He didn't catch what I was saying. There we go. Brakes are releasing. And that's what we wanted. Now just fill up with air, make sure we don't have any leaks going anywhere. Repair anything necessary other than this. Uh, I don't stock these on my truck because it's not a very common thing, but at the same time, when the brakes don't release, if they're not just frozen from cold weather, this is the most likely culprit, unless you're just getting no supply. Uh, I test them off my truck compressor to rule out, uh, and a lot of times it's a drop trailer. This was originally a drop trailer, but now it's, uh, it's got a driver with it. So, we are looking good. All right, hope this helps somebody. Uh, take care until the next one. Thanks.